Hello there, YouTube. It's me, Broken Terrain, and I've got a great one for you today. Look at these Palisades. Modular, magnetic, and looking great. I'm going to share with you just how I did it. And you can do it too. It's easy. I'm going to show you how right after the drop. I bet you think I used tons of wooden dowels, and you're only partially correct. I used only two packages of wooden dowels, a, a package of 41 8 inch dowels, and a package of 20 3 16 dowels. First thing I do is grab my grit sandpaper, heavy grit, low grit, and I'm just going to uh, scrub a texture into these dowels. I want them to look like rough uh, hewn wood. I got a close up of the texture there. And this is just going to soak that paint up and look fantastic. Once they've been textured, it's time to cut these 12 inch dowels down into four inch pieces. But don't worry if you're bad at math. Your buddy Broken Terrain has already done it for you. So you're going to get three pieces per dowel. This is going to leave you with 60 3 16 inch pieces and 120 of the 1 8 inch pieces. And this is very important for later on. So as long as you get a package of 20 of the 3 16 and 40 of the 1 8 and then cut them texture and cut them all up into four inch pieces you are going to have everything you need for this project why the two different sized pieces of doweling well this is to uh, mimic the fact that a palisade is created out of random tree trunks so anything too uniform would look silly and mechanical and we want this to look a little more uh, random and organic once they've all been textured and trimmed it's time to separate because I want to have uh, the crenellation on the tops of my palisade so I'm gonna have longer bits versus the shorter smaller bits so I've separated them into two piles I put the larger pile aside. They're going to stay as is at four inches tall. And this half is going to be trimmed down to three and a half inches tall. To do this, I just lined them all up using my ruler's edge, measured the two on the ends, a half inch down, and then carefully sketched the line on the rest of them. And then it's just trim, trim, trim. You're gonna do this with both the 3 16 and the 1 8 inch dowels. And then you're going to separate into four different piles. With our doweling all trimmed and separated into four different piles, it's time to carve that tip to each piece. This is going to take a little while, but is fairly easy to do. I recommend turning on a television show or a movie you like to watch and just slowly knock them out. Go over the cuts and then go in between cuts, uh, taking off lots of little slices here and there. It's going to create a rough hewn look from a very tiny woodcutter, and it will look great when it's all painted up. But there's a whole bunch of these to do, so get to work. Once all your dowlings have been trimmed and separated into sections, it's time to actually glue them down into the palisade walls. I've taken two craft sticks 
and I've glued them to my tabletop. And I'm gonna use my grid to keep everything nice and lined and square. And then pulling from your different piles, you'll pull one 3 16 inch dowling from the large area, and you'll pull two of the eighth inch dowlings from the large area and lay those together. Then you'll grab one 3 16 and two eight inch of the smaller size, the three and a half. And you'll keep doing this, two of the smaller with one of the larger. And just vary which location the larger one shows up in each of the three piece variants. And in this way, you will vary the look, size and width of your wall. And it will look very much like a frontier palisade. Got five of the four inch walls done, and I thought I had a bunch extra, so I thought I'd try to do some corner pieces so that I could wrap my walls around uh, edges if I so desired. So now that I have some straight wall pieces done, I'm gonna put them down on the grid next to my corner pieces. I'm going to tape these corner frame type pieces right to the mat, a lot like I did with the street pieces. And I'm going to put a spacer uh, up under the end there. In fact, I end up going with a two craft stick spacer. And this is to allow me to glue a, uh, a thicker, the 3 16 inch larger piece to the corner and this way I'll be able to wrap around the corner frames here and uh, and keep it looking good and matching my wall pieces once dry I remove the tape and work on one one side first and then the other Again, doing the same technique, which is one 3 16 piece to every two 1 8 inch pieces. And then vary that thick piece amongst the three pieces of its size so that you get a nice random effect. Very simple. The only other thing to pay attention to is um, what side each piece ends for the crenellation, and I mean the, the high or the low end. So just make sure when you're making all your pieces and you want them to fit together modular, uh, like that all the low pieces, the three and a half inch pieces, line up next to only high four inch pieces. Uh, it only takes a little bit of planning, but um, you'll you'll see what I mean when the corners put together like here on this side it ends in a small piece which then butts up perfectly to the large end side of my straight piece and then my straight piece ends in a short side which lines up well with the long side of the other corner if you want these modular just pay a little extra attention to this and it's going to pay off big time when the project is complete. Once the glue dries on these, take a snip and cut off the excess of those craft sticks. And now you're just about ready to start basing these things. Ooh, look at that gorgeous stack of palisades in the making. So for bases, I turn to a nice heavy chipboard. This empty garbage box is going to do just fine. Then it's just uh, simply a matter of hot gluing our walls down at a 90 degree angle to our base cardboard.
Then with a very sharp knife, we're going to trim all our pieces off and separate them. And you can see I'm getting very excited already. Taking the trimmed pieces and lining them up to admire my own handiwork. Of course, a mini for scale. Then with a hot glue gun, I go back in and I reinforce the fronts and the backs with some more hot glue. And I'm not worried about really getting it in there. I'm going to paint this up as dirt and mud. So go wild and really make sure these walls are attached well to your bases. It's important. Once finished with that, I go in and measure out three quarters an inch from the palisade wall. And this is where I'm going to put my supports for the walkway up above. But before I get to that, I want to weight these bases down just a little bit more. So I turn to my one inch fender washers and my hot glue gun. I drop some glue down on the washer and squeeze it into place. And then I use the hot glue gun to lay a coating and texture over. Once it dries and after I've flocked it with sand and painted it, it will simply look like uh, mud and earth and grass and dirt. So it's a wonderful way to add a little weight to your tabletop scatter and terrain. And at the same time, uh, don't affect its look or beauty because that uh, that super glue, I'm sorry, that hot glue can be textured and painted upon to look like standard earth. Once that's done, I will take the same hot glue and glue down a couple of matchsticks that ended up being the perfect height. They match that uh, top edge support there. For each of the straight pieces, I will glue two of those in place. And this is to help support the walkway along the top of the palisade. And then it's just a matter of getting the rest of them all taken care of, each with a fender washer and the supports for the walkway. And then some idiot came up with the idea to make these magnetic. Oh shoot, that idiot's me. I thought it would help uh, keep everything locked into place and, and while players and, uh, and monsters are running around on the, on the uh, ramparts of the palisade, uh, that them magneting together would be helpful. So, I took my magnets and globbed a bunch of hot glue down in the bottom corners. And with the first magnet secured, I pump a bunch of hot glue into the corner and, uh, and try to embed the second magnet deep inside the glue. I struggled with this for a little bit. The magnets are very powerful. And when I tried to pull them apart, the magnets refused to let go of each other and they ripped out of the still somewhat warm hot glue. How I went about fixing this problem was I took my corner piece and where the hot glue had created a pocket for the magnet, I put a tiny little squirt of hot glue back in inserted the magnet, and then I took a, another healthy amount of hot glue and uh, embedded that magnet in the small mound of hot glue. And then using the hot tip of my hot glue gun, I then kind of 
melted and carved and sculpted the glue into a, uh, a thin covering for the magnet. Once that side was dried, I went back to my original concept of placing the magnets on each other so that I could line the walls up, re-melting that uh, already placed glue. I moved the two pieces uh, back into place. And then once again, after the first amount of hot glue had dried, I lay down a secondary bunch of hot glue, take the pieces apart. Once again, the magnets stick to each other, but they come, um, the one magnet breaks free from the other easily because it's embedded in the glue on the corner. So I do the exact same with this magnet, pulling it out, putting it in this little pocket of hot glue, covering it with the hot glue and using the tip to sculpt it smooth and into place. And this worked really well. Uh, now it was just um, the rest of the palisades that needed to be done. I use this single corner piece for each piece so that I can ensure that the magnets all have a very similar or have a similar pull so that each of them sticks to any of the others. Once this one side was done, I did the exact same method with the other side. Again, linking each piece uh, with the same magnet polarity so that every single piece of this palisade can be swapped and magneted to the corresponding sides of all the others. And this method proved very successful. Ultimately, I think the extra work was totally worth it. I love the fact that these magnet together, it just finishes them off with that extra polished layer. And at this point, it's time to get started on those walkways. I take my craft sticks, measure them out to where the, uh, the support poles end up, and then with a little glue on one side and one edge, and the help of some tweezers, I glue each of the small supports into place. With the small supports in place and having had time to dry, a couple drops of my Eileen's Tacky Glue and an almost full uh, piece of craft stick trimmed just short of the palisade wall is glued lengthwise. And I um, had textured many of the craft sticks with the same uh, coarse sandpaper technique and my craft sticks, I found that three fit to an inch. If you look at the palisade, one shorter section and one longer section works out to exactly or almost one inch. So every lower and upper part of the crenellation gets three planks. And at this point, man, I am head over heels for these things. And I'm absolutely pumped to, uh, to get to painting them because they already look great. And I can't wait to get a coat of paint and, and wash on these things. The corner pieces are pretty much the same with the exception, of course, of the, the corner but uh, I'm not trying to do anything fancy where the planks meet in the corner. For one side, I have the planks go straight forward all the way to the edge of the palisade. And then the other uh, side, they simply head off. And here you can see, I just can't resist. Time to pull that figure out and have him jump around the, uh, the ramparts of the palisade just a little bit. Because if you're not having fun while you're doing this, I'm not quite sure why you're doing it. 
I decided, I know I had already built a couple of ladders in a previous video, but I did not want to be stuck using those ladders every time I wanted to use my palisade. So I decided I have five four inch straight pieces of palisade wall, and I decided to add a permanent ladder to two of those pieces. So I'll have uh, two straight pieces with ladder and three uh, straight pieces of wall without ladder. I thought this was going to uh, be enough for uh, tactical gameplay and at the same time too many ladders would make the palisades hard to defend if a defender were to encounter enemies inside. So of the five straight pieces, two will get ladders. Uh, I handled that by taking some dowel and dotting some glue and then using my small, small dowels as, uh, as cross timbers. And then I wanted to decorate them just a little bit. And because I'm a glutton for punishment, I decided to knot each of the steps to make it look as though they were lashed in place with rope. It took a long time and I'm only going to show you a couple of knots because no one wants to watch me do knots, but um, I still wanted to show you the process uh, in, in some form or fashion. Once the knots are knotted, a little dab of Eileen's tacky glue in the back to lock them in place. And then for the two straight sections of wall, a little hot glue bury the bottoms of the ladder in place and a little more Eileen's tacky glue just to lock the top of the ladder against the rampart of the policy. Almost done. We're getting close. You guys getting excited? I hope so. Now it's time to cut the bases down. I'm just taking off excess bits of the chip. Um, Nothing special here, cutting them close. You know, uh, you don't want your bases to scream at, uh, at you when they're your scatter and, and your bits of terrain are on the table. So I'm just cleaning these up a little bit, removing the excess and uh, giving everything a nice trim, clean look. And then we move on to flocking. This is when I take my white uh, PVA glue. I'm using Elmer's brand this time and a uh, paintbrush and I'm just going to paint the entire uh, base with that white PVA glue and then I'm going to use my crafting sand and sprinkle that on the base and this is going to hide all the the hot glue that washer will practically disappear at this point and once the glue dries the sand will stick in place and create a wonderful ground texture and then I go in with my black magic base coat, which is half black acrylic paint and half matte Mod Podge. And I'm just gonna go back in and cover all that hot glue and all of that blocked crafting sand. And this is gonna stiffen everything up and lock everything into place. Once dry, I'm gonna come back with one of my go-to favorites for uh, ground, that's uh, Mississippi Mud and I'm going to give the ground a nice thick coat of Mississippi mud. When I spread it on, I'm going to make sure I don't go too heavy though. I want that texture, all that work I put in with the glue in the sand, I want that to shine through. Spend a, a little time, a little extra patience. Try not to paint too high up on the walls, but a little bit won't hurt because it's essentially acting as mud and a little mud towards the bottom of our palisade is going to look completely natural. These are trunks of trees buried in in mud for you know for crying out loud. So don't worry about it. I'd like to take this time while I'm finishing up the Mississippi mud to thank you all for clicking on this video and giving it a, a watch for letting me entertain you. If you like it, hit like, please subscribe to the channel, please share the video, 
And uh, I hope to see you again real soon. Thank you so much. Finally, we're onto the dry brush. I'm gonna dry brush some honey brown on top of the Mississippi mud. I find that the combination of the two colors does a really nice job of making a uh, muddy ground terrain. So I'm just gonna fill my brush with the honey brown, wipe most of the excess off on some paper towel, and then take that brush and rub it against the textures of the ground. And you can see the honey brown picking up the raised areas of all that wonderful texture. Now that that's all taken care of, it's time to move on to the brown wash. I'm gonna just take a brown wash and just slather this thing with it. I'm gonna paint the, uh, the logs with the nothing but the brown wash, both the front and back side, all of the walkway timbers, the walkway supports. If the piece has a ladder, I'm gonna do the ladder as well. This took a little time just to make sure I got all the nooks and crannies of all the pieces. I'm still amazed at just how well a brown wash looks on these craft sticks and dowels. Absolutely love it. And if you haven't tried this method, I recommend it. It uh, really makes for a quick and effective paint job on your wooden pieces of scatter and terrain. So give it a go. At this point, uh, audience, I'm going to reach out to you guys. Is there something you'd love to see me tackle in a build? Uh, please comment below and let me know. I can't promise you I'll uh, get to it right away, but I will certainly leave it in the back of my mind for a future video. Thank you. Once I was done with the brown wash, I thought I'd go back in with my apple barrel vanilla ice cream and just hit all the edges and textures. And you can see as I brush the, the carved tips of the logs that all that wonderful detail just starts to jump out. A uh, quick brush against the, against the texture makes all these uh, timbers just pop and all that wonderful texture that you spent all that time sanding on them uh, finally pays off. And it, it also creates kind of an aged timber look. Uh, you could certainly skip this step if you wanted to, but I very much think it's worth your time to go in, make sure all those edges get hit. You can see as I brush against the walkway, all those individual boards start to pop and make sure you get those edges too. Man, that really makes things look fantastic, doesn't it? And don't forget the edges of those ladders. The intersections of the wall and the supports as well. All of this hitting up of the edges just helps to define and improve the visual interest of your pieces. Highly recommend it for this project.
with our dry brushing finished and our washes all dried up, it's time to lay some of the green grass flocking down. Start by taking some PVA glue and I just lightly dabbed. Uh, in the past, I like a full coverage, but these I almost want them to look a little muddy, like uh, soldiers have been walking under them and around them. Uh, maybe they're fairly recently um, been put up. Either way, I wanted them to kind of be half muddy, half grassy. And so I did a sparse flock with my green grass. Overall, I like the effect, uh, but you do you. Whatever you think your palisade flocking needs should be, then that's what they should be. Don't forget those front edges too. We want those to blend in as well. And then once everything dried, I just couldn't help myself. I snapped a couple beauty shots of the Palisades all lined up and set up with a little figurine on top. Man, they look great. Now I just take a little watered down PVA, dab it in place on top of that flock. We really want that flock to lock in. You don't want to take these pieces out and have green flock falling off and getting everywhere. So this is just a watered down glue layer, but this is it, this is the last of it. And once it dries, we're ready to go. Hey, I'm Big Bad Chief Orc, and I command you goblins and orcs to take that settlement. Uh, what do you say, shaman? Ah, it's in the stars. We will witness battle, my chief. Excellent. Be careful, heroes. Goblins and orcs have amassed an army, and they're just outside the palisade, ready to attack that small village. You need to protect all those women and children. Man the walls and prepare yourselves for the battles of your life. Man, check this out. I've got my heroes up on the walls, defending a small town. God, they look good. YouTube, you gotta try this project out. This craft turns out amazing. And I'll use these things over and over and over again. And look at that, magnets. Look at those palisades locking into place. That's gonna be nice and durable on your table. Well, we've come to another uh, another end, YouTube, but don't worry, I'll be back. Until then, like each other, love each other, be kind to one another, and craft on.